what are you showing them? What the stove looks like in its crate. Yeah, it's even got a nice little rocket on the side. I know, I think the rocket is like the best part. Yeah, it's very cute. Hey guys, this is our basement living room. You can hear the echo. We have a lot of concrete, we have a lot of tile, we have a lot of rock back here from the hearth. And this house was meant to actually be heated from the basement. When we moved in here, it had a massive, uh, uh, what are they called, some kind of blaze king, blaze princess, massive stove down here. And we tried to heat our house from the basement with that stove our first year. Did we succeed? Yes. Did it cost us 12 cord of wood? Yes. Did we only move in in Christmas? Yes. <laughs> so we had, um, you know, we run our wood stove here until May because we have very cold nights, still freezing nights through May. And um, so heat efficiency with the wood stove is a really big deal for us because we, we can just go through massive amounts of firewood in the winter. One of the problems with having a wood burning stove upstairs is that when you're burning at night it overheats you. You're in your bedrooms and you have to shut the door to keep the heat from going in if you're going to have the wood stove going all night. The other thing is you have to get up and feed it at night in order to be able to heat with wood at night. So our current strategy with our Elmira stove upstairs is that we have the upstairs fire going during the day when I'm awake to do it, we keep everything nice and warm and cozy. And then at night, we let the fire go out and we turn our heat thermostats up to 65. We have baseboard heat, so it's very inefficient. It costs, um, well, we've never used them 100%. Our renters use them 100% without a wood burning stove. And their heat bills were $600 a month here in our 2100 square foot home. We can't afford that. We've never been able to afford something like that. That's more than our mortgage. And so we've always used wood heat in our home, but we kind of want to tweak things a little bit. Uh, when Darwin from the Honeydew Carpenter uh, put the little rocket mass heater in our off-grid cabin, we loved it so much we wanted to try it here in the house. Now, that little rocket stove was not UL certified. so. It was not in compliance with a homeowner's insurance policy or somebody with a mortgage, and it made us nervous to have it in the house. Also, um, that stove was not efficient without the mass. A little rocket mass heater needs a mass in order to be able to store the heat in the mass instead of just having it all go up the chimney. The other problem with the little Aircrete rocket stove was that creosote water would uh, accumulate at the bottom of the elbow where the stove went into the wall. And so we didn't want moisture getting into our wall and us having mold problems. Now, here about a month ago, we had uh, Liberator stoves reach out to us. They had seen our Aircrete rocket mass heater out in the off-grid cabin, the videos we made about it, and they wanted to know if we wanted a UL certified stove to put in the house. So here we are. I'm so excited. So the, the crate is still out in the garage, ready to go. We haven't brought it in yet, but we're gonna bring it in and we're gonna install it and I'm excited to see what it does. So it's not insulated the same way that our little Aircrete uh, rocket stove was insulated. That stove had Aircrete in it, which meant that the raging temperatures inside of rocket stove were insulated from your immediate environment. So you could touch the rocket mass heater, the Aircrete one, and it wouldn't burn you. 
other properties of Air Creek made it so that smoke would actually go down into the bench. You didn't have to be super careful about how you built your mass because of the nature of the Air Creek and what Darwin did. It sucked the, the gases, it sucked the, um, the smoke down into the bench and through and then out because everything was insulated and so the heat moved well. With this stove, it's not gonna be the same thing. This is more of a furnace. The Liberator stove is going to be very hot. Rocket stoves get very hot. And it's going to be about 25% more efficient than a regular wood stove, which is phenomenal. It's great, it's so exciting. But you're gonna to have to be careful not to touch it because it's gonna be very hot. It doesn't have any insulating factors. It's going to be hotter than a regular wood burning stove. That because of their efficiency, they are e fit more efficient because they burn hotter. Uh, the other thing we liked about the Liberator stove was that it comes with a pellet hopper so that you could put a bag of pellets in at night and keep your house from getting cold without you having to get up at night to take care of it. And it requires no electricity to work the hopper. So um, it feels really in line with our value system. We love wood heat and so we're getting ready to get that put in. All right, this is the stairway that goes down to the basement. We have a fan and then we will probably have another fan at the bottom of the stairs in order to also move the heat up. Currently it is so cold in here. We've got that little stove going and we've got the baseboard going so that we can stand to film. One of the reasons we like to have a cold basement is because of our pantry. We like to keep potatoes out here. And so we may have to rethink the, the way that our pantry works. We may need to take our root crops into a further corner of the house, one that is not so close to the room where we have this rocket stove. All right, so the stove is just under 300 pounds. So we're just gonna wiggle it this way. Um, and then we're gonna tip it down this side. We've had to move enough heavy things through here that we kind of have a process down. And so that's what we're gonna do. So they have a myriad of colors, including gold, red, black, blue. <laughs> so, what else is there? There's blue. Hold that. I think this is the hopper. Right. Yeah, yes, that's the that hopper. That looks like the hopper. Should we pull it out and let them see what the color looks like? Uh, it's kind of heavy. Oh, it looks like black. Oh, that's a lid. Can we tilt the box? Mom, Let's lift the box and then tilt it on the side. The box is like, it's probably going to attach. Grand reveal. So it's really good thick steel. This is your cleaning tool and once again it is really good quality metal. The stuff that we had come with our Amira is bendy. This is not bendy and it has a nice cool handle instead of being a metal handle. So that's kind of fun. They look nice so far. Come on at this plate on the back. All right, so this stove is UL certified, which means that it is certified to be in a home situation and you don't have to worry about your homeowner's insurance or anything using this stove. It has all the diagrams and all the legal hoop to do on the back saying, we're safe, we're safe. Okay, I'm gonna try and read this to you guys even though you probably can't see it. It says, Liberator Rocket Heaters 
at www.rocketheater.com. UL1482 ULC S627ASTM E1509. Guardian Fire Testing Laboratories. Unless using wood fuel pellets, do not use grate or elevate fire. Build wood fire directly on hearth, prevent house fires. Install and use only in accordance with manufacturer's installation and operating instructions. Contact local building and or fire officials about restrictions and installation inspection in your area. Inspect chimney connectors and chimney at least once every two months and clean when necessary. Under certain conditions of use, creosote buildup may occur rapidly. Do not connect the unit to a chimney flue serving another appliance. Floor protection material. A NRTL listed or non-combustible material with a minimum insulation value of R value of 2.0. Do not overfire. If heater or chimney connector glows, you are overfiring. Mobile home approved. Installation in residential type home. Use six inch diameter single wall, 24 gauge minimum black or blued steel chimney connector pipe with NRTL listed six inch class AHT-103 chimney system or masonry residential type chimney. Special methods are required when passing through a wall or ceiling. See instructions and local building codes. Install and use only in accordance with the owner's manual. And then it talks about emissions. Okay, this wood heater needs periodic inspection and repair for proper operation. Consult the owner's manual for further information. It is against federal regulations to operate this wood heater in a manner inconsistent with the operating instructions in the owner's manual. There we go. There's your diagram. All right, so we do have a regular hearth. These are rock tiles, and then we have rocks along the back. And we have the appropriate clearance. We have the appropriate chimney. Our chimney is filled with perlite between the two um, pieces. This was like an eight inch uh, chimney, which was way too big. So we have an inner lining and then we have perlite and then it's capped with a uh, quick crete here to hold the perlite in. So it's an insulated chimney. And on the outside of this is actually a masonry type uh, concrete chimney. This is the insert we used so that you can put a stove through a window and have an external chimney if you have to, if you had an emergency. This was made by Darwin over at the Honeydew Carpenter. As you can see, it has been used. And the aircrete insulates everything so that you don't have uh, heat loss through your window. And this just fits in the window itself and then the window closes on it as if it was an air conditioning unit. And it's, again, fully insulated, it's rock, so it's not flammable. If, if we wanted to plumb this stove out the window and we had a chimney outside the window that we could attach to the house for emergency use, we could use this air crate insert and it is homemade and fully customized to our house. is what the owner's manual looks like. I'm not sure if you can see that in the light, but um, the warranty, things you need to be careful about. How you put it together. Okay, so this is your grate. I'm not sure how it works. I like to package it in all the little places. That's heavy steel. All right, so this has an air intake, an air inlet, so that you have appropriate air to fuel mixture. That's what this is. We have read the instructions but it's always kind of a different situation once you actually get into it. Also, there's instructions on integration of rocket mass, sorry, integration of rocket heater to thermal mass. So you could build a bench and have it 
go through a bench. The um, Just towel be careful from underneath. If I can lift it from this side, and you can pull it. And turn, Paige, turn. Should I put it underneath again? No. We, I was just worried it was going to be way too heavy. Huh? It's kind of shaded green. Oh, it's a gray green. green. We need to make sure we're saving screws. Well, they shouldn't. Like the blue one looks like. Darker, like a metal blue. Do you have They the... use thick steel. Uh -huh. This is awesome. Compared to the and their welds are pretty good. The Compared to what? Huh? Compared to what? Compared to the one upstairs? Yeah, Myra. Or, no, Myra. All right, yeah, so was... there's your fire bricks that are inside that are, the reason for those bricks is to keep the heat from melting your metal. A rocket stove will heat and melt metal over time. Mm -hmm. So they would be using fire bricks in here the same way that Darwin did in his stove in order to keep the metal from melting. Okay, now I am a little excited. Okay. It was so much fun doing the, the stove with Darwin. And now to see this and see how their take on it, it's it's pretty cool. They're very, very similar. Wax on, wax off. So, the lid. Lid off. Uh -huh. The lid is only so It just cinches down the little holes. Cinching on, yep. So it's light twist, not heavy twist. The weight of it is, and the, the way that the smoke goes through the yep. tooth is what pulls the smoke. It's not having. So get it finger tight and then like maybe it's a not, half turn I, more. I don't know that it's even, honey. I don't think that it got put down even. The back is higher than the front. I'll loosen it up a little bit. It's, it's on there. So. You could sit on it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to sit on it. Okay. Maybe it's just a visual. Well. A bakery. I think actually, no, let's twist it so nobody's getting caught on set screws as they go by. It's probably there. So this is the hopper for using wood heating pellets. Uh, it consists of a lovely box right here. Again, good thick steel. Uh, it needs just a little bit of assembly and so uh, there's there's three basic components here. You've got, of course, the hopper, which is upside down right now. And then you've got your slide, which controls, turns on and off the pellets. And then you have the feed tube right here. So this is the only real assembly that you need to do, is to slide the feed tube in, and then they recommend to back it out a half of an inch, and then tighten up the set screw that comes with it. They did specify on the hopper that this door is not meant to control to control the flow. It's either on or off. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. either on or off. This is an emergency stop, not a damper. Mm -hmm. It's if it gets too hot. It, yeah. These are the air intakes. All right, so for this video, we just wanted to show you the assembly on how this stove is put together. It really is a very simple design. It comes in lightweight. It was me and the girls, and some of you remember I have a bad back. We got the stove in without really much issue, down a half a flight of stairs, and got it assembled in basically a half a day. 
So in the next videos that are coming up, we will show lighting and working, operating this stove on both pellets and cordwood. And we will show a clean out video in between and really excited to see how this comes along and excited to bring you along for the ride. Raga stoves are a little different than regular wood stoves. They have a very intense heat because of the way that the air flows through the stove. There's a J-tube inside that makes it so that you have an actual uh, uh, com more complete combustion rather than having air go through the stove like an L, which is a regular stove. This one, the air goes in, it goes down, then it goes out. And so there's, there's some turning of the air, some turbulence in the air that makes for a more complete combustion. Now, I love, love, love rocket stoves. I think they're so cool. However, I think their ultimate wow factor is when it's attached to a, a mass, a bench, a, a, a box filled with rocks. And the reason for that is because by having a box filled with rocks that's connected to the stove, those rocks absorb all the heat from the exhaust before the smoke goes up the chimney, which means that you use less wood, you have more comfortable heat instead of an intense heat, and it's just cool. To me, <laughs> that's just so cool that you can just capture the heat. Because with a rocket sto stove by itself or with a regular conventional uh, uh, wood stove, a lot of the heat just goes straight up the chimney. So, my ultimate end goal in this is to attach a mass bench to the stove. So, best resources for rocket stoves and rocket mass heaters is Erica and Ernie Wisner's book. I will have the link for their book in the description. Also, Permies is a great resource for finding people that have already built rocket mass heaters themselves or are doing something similar to what I am with this stove and then building the mass on the side. I think the next best thing to having a mass is to indeed have a, a pellet hopper that goes on the top of your stove. The reason for that is that with a pellet hopper, it clinks a few little pellets down as needed, but you don't have to be awake to do it. Rocket stoves, you do still have heat go up the chimney. It's unavoidable. However, their more complete combustion does mean that you can harvest more heat off the sides of the stove as it radiates out into your house than a conventional stove. This, this stove will get much, much hotter than a conventional wood stove. And um, if I had toddlers, most likely I would put up a little bit of a gate around this stove until babies learn not to touch things, or I might just always have something up around this stove because there's not a cool side on this stove. <clears throat> so everything's toasty. The big difference that I'm feeling is that it's not roasting. Uh, last year, the week that we used it, we had good temperatures down here, but then it would start to get hot. Even when we had the little tiny uh, army stove in here it would get really hot like really hot and then you go upstairs and it would be miserable there'd be this line where it was bearable and then you cross the line on the stairs to go upstairs and you almost couldn't breathe it was so hot so the difference with this one is it doesn't seem to burn as hot as it did before he made the the firebox smaller and he insulated it and the pea gravel inside the shroud is the same we never did get the bench to work last year this year it's working like a charm and um, the pipes that are going in and out of the bench are not burn hot. The, the, the side closest to the wall where the smoke is coming out, you can put your hand on it, it's comfortable. The one going in is hot enough that if you hold your hand on it, it's gonna hurt, but it's not hot enough that if you touch it, it's gonna burn you. So um, not a huge fire safety thing. You know, you don't want to put flammables right next to it, obviously, but it's not hot enough that it would start a fire. So I've already got a log in here that is 100% coal that's still burning away. So it's the gases in the wood that are burning right now, not the wood itself. And um, I am just enjoying 
the warmth. It feels probably, I would bet that it's about 74, 72, 74 degrees in here. So my hands feel comfortable. My bum is a little cold because I'm on the cold floor, but it is the perfect temperature right now. It's not warm enough that it makes me want to go to sleep. It's not cold enough that it makes me want to put on more of a jacket. I do have on a little bit of a sweater. So I want to put a little bit more wood in here, but I'm waiting for the coals to finish burning and they keep not finishing. Um, let's see, where's my pliers? Here they are. So I'm using pliers because Darwin put a little flap in the door that swings in and can be sucked in by the um, negative pressure that's created when the air goes in. And it has just that little lip that's open that allows the air to come in on kind of pressurized, I'm not sure how else to put it. But it doesn't have a handle on it, so I have these pliers. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but it, the flap is actually sucked in. The, the air is moving so quickly. But you can get smart, sparks that come out of this when it's really rip snort and you'll get a spark or a coal come out. So having the door here where I can actually turn the heat up and down makes a difference. One of the problems we were having was that the flame was actually sucking off the wood. It wasn't starting the wood on fire. It was just shooting right up the chimney. And so we did at one point have to close down this door and just open this one so that the flame would slow down and consume some of the wood. Um, we did extend the hearth a little bit. The reason being that if a coal did fall out, you don't want it to fall on wood. And I would be even more comfortable if we had tile down just so we didn't have combustibles here right in front of the stove. But we did put down more tin and more bricks. And then I like to use this to put ashes onto or just to put down so that if I do have coals fall out, they're just right there on the tray. And then here's my wood. I checked about 45 minutes ago to see if I could finally put the log in. If if I didn't have the rocket mass heater right now, I would be concerned about having a stove going in this weather. We've got probably somewhere between 30 and 50 mile an hour winds right now. It's, it's really making a lot of noise out of the plastic on the greenhouse as well as on the front of the house. But I'm not the least bit concerned. I'm not the least bit concerned. There's no creosote in the chimney and the wind isn't having hardly any effect on the chimney and how hard it, it's pulling up. Um, one interesting fact is indeed the rocket stove took off further, it took off louder and stronger when we opened up the, the pipe to go into the bench, even though the bench was cold and had cold pebbles in it. It actually, it actually performed better with the chimney than without, so go figure. You can hear the roaring. There we go. Now I'm going to close that because once again, it's too much. It's too much. So I'm going to close this down just a little bit. We had a really good bed of coals in there and then I just put wood on top. So I closed down the damper just a bit. We still have this here sealed. And that way it kind of keeps things under control. If I wanted to really heat things up in here, I'd open that up and let it roar if I really wanted it to be hot in here. I'd open that up so that the air is going directly underneath the wood and right up. But it's really comfortable in here right now. So that's as complicated as it gets. I am, my mind is blown by this. I'm so excited. It's not too heavy for my floor. The pea gravel is spread out enough over the floor that it's not hurting the floor and we have the rocket stove on the tin and then on the bricks and it has the pea gravel in it too to warm it up so this is warm hot warmish hot to the touch and that is uh, the the pea gravel that's inside the shroud and this is warm hot to the touch because it has air creed in it so Go check out Darwin and Melanie over at the Honeydew Carpenter if you want to take part in their brilliance. <laughs>